and Roma in the area of economics and political cartoons in the Egyptian newspaper. His PhD addresses the cognitive linguistic aspects of digital discourse analysis. He got the full prize then to teach Arabic language at State University of New York, USA, during the academic year 2007-2008. Uh, he was also teaching Arabic language, literature, and linguistics at the College of William and Mary Virginia. Uh, this is not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Professor Nehmer. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk today about my presentation, which is entitled A Linguistic Study of Manipulative Strategies um, of the Mobile Network Operators in Egypt and in the U.S. What I'm trying to do today is I'm trying to find a way of connection between using language manipulation on one hand and advertising by mobile network operators on the other hand. How can we find a connection between both? How could such companies use language as a manipulative device in order to convince, to persuade, or to change the minds of the people towards their objectives? Now, the scope of the study that I have here, this study handles samples of ads from the Egyptian and from the American network companies. I have selected three important companies here in Egypt, Vodafone, Orange, and It's a Lot. From the American side, we have three major companies, as you know, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. Let me just go straight forward and tell you something and that pushed me to handle such a research paper. When I was in the United States, I was teaching there for three years. First time I went there, I went to a mobile phone store in order to get a subscription for the service. When I went inside the place, I was told, you're gonna have the best service the best network, the best coverage ever. When I went back home and I tried to use my mobile, and that was surprising to me, I suffered. It was a rusty service. The service was truly very bad. Then I remembered, I said to myself, wow, I feel like I'm in Egypt. So when I came back to Egypt and I tried to get a connection again for another company, again, I suffered from the service. Although I was told at the beginning, that I would have the perfect service in the world. And then when I tried to use it, I felt like there's something wrong. And I asked myself the question, was I persuaded or was I manipulated by this company using language? That was the main reason to push me forward to handle such a study. Now, I gave here samples for the three major companies in Egypt. I have here Vodafone, I have Kowitna, Shinnina Bayna Raqqa Wahid, Kowitna Fi Kowit Kul Wahid, El Kowat Mehidik, Power in Your Hands. In Orange, in Tabuwineer Mabuk, the words in Tabuwineer And look at this slogan, Hadaya Kulinas. Presents and gifts for all people. Now, the third one is Salam Tazam Hikaya. 
being done of the investment. This is taken as a model for all companies. And here we have on the American side, we have three important companies as well, AT&T. Look and think about the words which are used here. Join AT&T family. It's a family. It is a family. Again, join this family. And the second one, Verizon. Look at this. Best deals, the best service, and the best network. All right, let's go ahead and get to the third one we have. Uh, T-Mobile, Black Friday say, 2016, 50 bucks unlimited text, talk, and data. Wow, very interesting slogans and words and sentences. Wonderful language that is used here. Well, let's go ahead. I asked myself the first question here. What are the manipulative strategies or the manipulative ways employed in advertising to form a mental model of the audience? And our professor, Professor Shepard, was talking about the semiotic and the cognitive way. Again, I'm going here to think about something else. How could language be used to form, to create a cognitive and a model, a cognitive and a mental structure in our memory? Look at this. Look at the slogan here. Life change orange. All right. Second question I have: How linguistic aspects are deeply correlated with the cognitive model in manipulation? The third one: What are the specific rhetorical devices that could be used effectively in order to influence the audience? Now, if I talk about manipulation, then I need to go to someone who is very prominent, Van Dyck or Van Dyck or Van Dyck. And they say Dutch language, it's a Dutch name, as far as I know. Can I 2006 defines manipulation? What is that? It is the concept of power, it is the concept of power holder concealing his intention. Let me just repeat this word again. Concealing his intention, hiding his purpose, not revealing what he wants to say. So it's concealing his intention to influence his listeners or his followers or his audience, whatever, to follow his wishes. This is Ben Relation and persuasion, because I was asking myself a tricky question. Is this a manipulation or is this is persuasion? Well, let's see the difference here. Here we have Paul Chelton, 2005, it explains that there is no manipulation without the intention to manipulate. All right. Manipulators appeals to emotion, and let me just read that, withhold vital information in an attempt to sway a person to a certain way of thinking. Persuasion, on the other hand, it is something else. Persuasion, you do not withhold or prevent information. This is the first one. And then manipulation implies conceal, again. So Ben Bike talked about concealing intentions. Paul Chilton talking about concealed motive, motives, and therefore the manipulator is subtly seeking to get someone to do something. All right. The Dyke's approach that I tried to apply in my study, the Dyke's classified that into two important elements the social, the social perspective, the cognitive perspective, and the discursive one. When, I, when it comes to social, I'm talking here about the society, the interaction among people. The cognitive, and here I'm talking about the minds of the people, and discursive, I'm talking about text and talks. Now, this is the core point. Manipulation strategies. What are they? The first one here is vague. It's to be ambiguous. The claim is overly vague. It contains a phrase or a statement that is too broad to have a clear meaning. Now, let me just give one example here. Life changes with orange. It's too vague. What do you mean by life changes with orange? I don't understand exactly what kind of change are you telling me about. You did not give me the details. You are very vague. You are not clear. This is a versus strategy in manipulation. An example I have here, here in orange. Let me just read that. Orange for G, the goodness. Orange for G, the goodness. And from Verizon, uh, in Verizon company perspective, best deals, best devices, best network. 
or the second strategy that is used here linguistically. Right, commission. Hiding or concealing important information necessary to evaluate its reasonableness or truthfulness. The American side here that we have, don't settle. Don't settle. Get America's largest 4G network and for the Itasalat in Dunya Lissafiatra. This is in complete sentence. I don't understand what, what is the information I can get from such a phrase or such a clause. You're just making, you're just giving me cut short sentences to convince me. But I'm sorry, this is not convincing. This is not persuasion. You are doing something else with me in order to convey your message. And the third one, inaccurate claims. Inaccurate claims, the claim accurate, sometimes I can say fabrication, but I'm the one to exaggerate that. As for an example for Vodafone, here we have for Orange, and this is currently circulated in our media. I know that if such companies, I thought that earlier, I was going to have ambassador. If some if such companies know that I'm doing a research like that, they're gonna file a lawsuit against me outside. So if I make a subscription for Orange, then I can go to Carrefour and buy every stuff I have or I need. The American side, look to the American side in the same way. ATT covers what? 99% all Americans. But what about the other companies? Or two. On the cognitive level, we have to understand three important elements. Number one, generalization. Number two, repeated messages. Number three, mental model. I'm going to show you a video now. But let me just let me just focus on the word repeated, repetition, repetition, and the cognitive style as well, and the mental models. On the linguistic level, here what I observe, and I'm trying to do that to observe. Linguistics mean it's a scientific way of observing linguistic entities. So I'm observing something. Simple words, simple sentences, and colloquial language. The advertisers may represent information in an informal and intimate way. And therefore, we see him or her talk about the product or an idea by using simple words or sentences. All right. An example for the colloquial way. Here we have, here we have an example here in the Egyptian past. And look to the American side. They are using again another slang way. The North Poles get nothing. N O T I N T H I N. Nothing in the US. Very American slang way. Nothing. All right. Now, manipulation and rhetorical device and advertising. Here, I'm just quoting Jeffrey, Professor Jeffrey Leach. He talked about that there is a connection sometimes between using rhetoric and manipulation. One of them is parallelism or an anaphora, which means repeating the deliberate repetition of the first part of the sentence. Like, my life is my purpose, my life is my goal, my life is my inspiration. Now look here, and whether from the ad, it says the same way. There is battling structures that we have here. For it. Second one, a before a strategy. This is the repetition of the same or words at the end of successive sentences. Now let me just repeat here. Ma tkhalish shurut al kitira tawaqqaf shughlak ma nizam ikhtiyari ingis fi kull shughlak. So it's shughlak repeated at the end of the sentence. There's something quite a bit interesting that I would like to talk about. If I'm talking about manipulation, I'm just not thinking about it. Now, for me, not as a linguist, not as a professor, but as a language, but as a mobile phone user. How could I be properly detect or resist manipulation? Van Dyke talked about that. Van Dyke talked about, according to Van Dyke, he explained that manipulation could be detected and resisted. One of the ways, one of the strategic ways that could be used here is to have general knowledge for the subject matter. Not only general knowledge, but also to get the details and to understand and to read and to know and to get more knowledge about your subject. This is quite a bit important. Um, concluding remarks. And before I go on to the conclusion, I need to show you here something. It's the video. This is the time that Professor Shekhar told me that I need to watch the video today. All right. 
All right, we got a lot to the video now. Now it's your turn. It's your time now. I'm gonna show you the video. And you, think about that. Think about the video from the Egyptian side, from the American side. It's something out of my study because my study is related to printed ads and all of that kind of stuff. This is commercial uh, ad uh, on TV. But it's quite a bit interesting. That can be used for further study in the future. Let's see here something from um, something from Vodafone. We're gonna watch a video now from Vodafone. The video that we have here today, it's it's uh, by nonverbal language. They are using just the music and symbolic and famous figures. And the, at the end, you just say two or three or four words, just four words at the end. And I'm gonna show you also the American ad on the other hand. Let's start with the first one, please. Let's go ahead.
Yeah. American Sniper could be different, but let's see that. I'm not going to say anything. You will detect, you will guess what I want to say. Time now for the new rules, all right. One of the major points that I found here, I figure, when it comes to the American sign and the Egyptian sign is, and this is my humble observation, that we are trying to use, we are using the technique of using emotions, and that could reflect part of our cultural oriented society. We are more emotional as a society, but look at the American sign. They are very pragmatic and very practical, although they are also using manipulative strategies. Let's just go ahead here to the last comment that I have. Um, the concluding remarks. One of the things that I truly observe here when it comes to um, manipulation in advertising. Oh. So anyway, um, I'm gonna go here. Uh, so it's observed that manipulative strategies investigating the study, vagueness and omission are used and ambiguous claims. Um, uh, I also observed that there is a linguistic feature here, syntactic irregularity in complete sentences all the time. And um, slang is one way that is used linguistically as well. It's used both in both the American side and the Egyptian side uh, to make the audience to be more um, closer uh, if I may say that, uh, there is also something else on a cognitive level. This is something reveals among the manipulative strategy. Generalization is one strategy. The repetition, on the other hand, I guess we came down to the end. Thank you so much. Please give me a hand for questions.